What's up, HD Maggers? Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and welcome to the You Asked For It section. If, uh, if you haven't been here before, this is the section where if you submit a question or a comment, um, you know, then we address those questions and comments month to month. So we've had a few come in this past month, and um, we're going to be working through those as we, as we receive them. Um, but this is a great one that I thought fit uh, fit really well with you know what a lot of coaches are thinking about right now as they're as they're beginning to plan their seasons uh, for next year. So uh, let me just read the question, or, or I guess it's a comment uh, or a request, and then uh, we'll skip over to the rink and we can go from there. Um, but this one comes from Stephen out in Sherbrooke, Quebec, and he says, "Excellent stuff. I'm coaching at a competition level, double B or double C." and I've always been searching for great face-off strategies. This year I look forward to improving my teaching ability in that area, and I think that you should post some tactics out in your next issues. So, um, Steven, appreciate the comment, and uh, hopefully this helps. So let's go ahead, we'll clip over to the rink here, and uh, I wanna talk a little bit about strategy and then give you a couple examples on how to implement that strategy. Usually what I do in the face-off, in the, in the face-off strategy side of things is I try to think what's my objective with the face-off, and um, you know if I win, am I going to be in good position for that objective? If I lose, what's my objective? And if if I lose, am I going to be in good position for that objective? So basically, I want to set up my face-off tactic, especially in the defensive zone, because defensive zone face-offs can be um, they can be a really great thing. You know, get a quick breakout if you win the if you win the draw, if you have a good strategy. Um, or they can also be devastating if you're not in good position when you lose the draw. So defensive zone faceoffs can make or break you. Um, neutral zone and offensive zone faceoffs are also important, but it's not going to immediately result in a goal against you if, if you mess it up. So I would say start with D zone faceoffs first as far as your planning and strategizing goes, and then work your way out. So, um, you know, we're going to start, we're going to kind of do the same thing with this. Um, in a defensive zone face-off, if we win it, what is our main objective? Our main objective if we win the D-zone face-off is to be in good position for a breakout. Uh, and then hopefully we're being by being in good position for a breakout, we're actually able to move the puck out of our zone under control and uh, work through the neutral zone, have a threat against the other team in the, uh, in the offensive zone. So that's kind of what we're looking to do. Um, what's our objective if we lose the defensive zone face-off? If we lose a defensive zone faceoff, well, we want to be in good position for our regular defensive zone coverage setup that we use. So this faceoff uh, strategy leads very well to both situations, and and the way that we want to set up our positioning is so that whether we win or lose, we're going to be in the proper position for whatever that objective is. So to either get a breakout if we win, or to protect our our zone if we lose. So here's what I like to do, and um, you know, there obviously there's anytime you're talking systems, there's numbers, a number of different ways of doing things, but this way has worked really well for me in the past. Uh, what we do, so this is kind of a typical uh, face-off setup that you would see. Um, you know, different teams will have different setups. That's okay. We want to talk objectives here. We want to talk, um, you know, what each position is trying to do. So you know, sometimes you may see this guy slid over here for a quick shot. That's fine. Um, it doesn't change what our strategy is. So we'll just put them back here for now. What we're trying to do here is, uh, so we've got, uh, I'll just kind of lay out the positions first of all. We've got our centerman, obviously playing center. And then usually what I like to do is I flip flop wings and Ds. So we bring our left D over to the right side, and yes, that is on purpose. Um, you know, in, pa in the past when I've explained this, people have asked me, is that a typo? Should that be the right D there? Um, I like the lefty, um, specifically I like a left-handed defenseman. So if you've got a left-handed defenseman playing right defense, he can stay there. Um, but I like a left-handed defenseman there because if the puck comes into the corner and it kind of hugs the boards, it's a lot easier to dig that out in motion on your forehand um, and, and make a play out of it than it is to come in and, and dig it out on the backhand. The other thing that people ask me is, why do you have him so far up? You know, what wouldn't it be easier if he starts closer to the corner? And I say, you know, yes or no. If the centerman is really confident and and able to consistently win it, um, you know. So let's say that we put our defenseman here. Let's just kind of draw it out. If our centerman is is like always 100% of the time winning it to the the corner side of the defenseman, then then that's fine because he can just go in, pick it up, and and he's on his way for a breakout. Um, however, if that face-off somehow accidentally wins to this side of him, 
then it's definitely not as easy. He's got to get it, turn around, pick it up, because we're trying to initiate the breakout out the far side. Um, and I'll draw that out in a second. So, um, you know, a lot of times you see teams that set their guy out back here, and then the faceoff gets one. Sorry about this. Faceoff gets one back to like right here. And now he's having to take a loop to go get the puck, and it's just not as effective as whether he was just coming from a straight line straight off the hash mark, boom, pick it up, and ring it around for that quick ring breakout that we're looking for. So that that's kind of my my two cents worth and my strategy for that. If you disagree, that's totally fine. You can do it the way you want. You're the coach. Um, but that is why I have it set up the way I do, and it has worked really well for me in the past. Everything's a work in a work a, a work in motion or whatever the saying is. Um, you know, as you go through, you'll realize different things for different teams and tweaks that you want to make for your own team that will make it so that your players, you know, strengths and weaknesses um, can be utilized effectively. So again, there may be things you, <clears throat> that you want to change up. That's fine. So that's why we have our left defenseman there. We've got our right defenseman over here. And basically what he's going to be doing is kind of setting a pick. So we'll get to that in a second, but he's going to be a, the pick man basically opening up a channel for the right winger to get through. Now you'll notice we've got the right winger on the left side um, as well. So he's a, another flip-flop. And the reason why is because, so a lot of teams, that they'll set him up over here. Well, A, that makes it so there's no space for that left defenseman there. Um, B, it's just, it's it kind of puts him out in uh, an ineffective position. We want this guy to be able to block a shot, okay? And so um, if we lose the draw, and the faceoff comes back to, to any of these players. Basically, usually what I do is I'll draw a line. Um, in fact, let me draw kind of a green box. The green box always helps me explain things better. <laughs> so let's just say like this, we've got a green box like this, okay? So anything from the hash marks to the boards, um, and then obviously on the, on the other team's side of the, of the faceoff. So anything that we lose that's on this side, we want our right winger attacking that, attacking that with speed. And he's going to be able to get out there and hopefully do that, um, you know, because as soon as the puck drops, he's flying through. Like that's his main, that's his main objective. As soon as the puck drops, he's flying through, whether we win or lose. And we'll show you how this all pans out by the end. But if we, if we lose the faceoff, he's coming through and wherever the puck went, um, he's on his way there. So usually... Typically, you'll see they're winning it back to their defenseman, one or the other. If it goes to either defenseman, he's going, okay? Um, and he's basically just trying to get in the way of the shot. A lot of times what you'll see is, uh, that's, typically you'll see like a, def uh, a play where the faceoff comes back to this defenseman and then immediately over. And actually, as the faceoff is being won, this defenseman's sliding over, so it comes more like this almost to the middle, okay? In that case, that'll get to where our left winger's responsibility is too, and we'll show you that. The right winger just goes out to the initial pass. He's not gonna be like chasing, chasing, chasing around, unless it really, unless it's obviously that he can pick one up, like if somebody bobbles it or whatever, but he's not gonna be chasing out and then chasing over, because then again, what we wanna do is we, have, we wanna have players in the shooting lanes, okay? And if he's going out and then veering over, now he's no longer in the shooting lane, he's just chasing. So we're not going to say right winger has the shot, the shot no matter what, because if there's a pass, then that doesn't hold true anymore. So let's just continue on with this example. What if they do go back to the D and then across? Well, right winger's going out, okay, to pressure that, make sure that the shot doesn't come through, okay. And um, if that guy still decides to shoot and somehow gets it through the right winger, it's not going to be a, a fantastic shot on net because hopefully that right winger will have taken the proper angle. And um, you know, a lot of times as a right winger or as the, the attack man, the, if a defenseman tries to force that shot, a lot of times it hits that shin pad and he's gone for a breakaway anyways. Um, sometimes that pass can be intercepted, just depends on the situation. Uh, so what we have is the right winger goes through, left winger is, is basically gonna hang on for just a split second, see where the face off goes. And as he sees, as soon as he sees the face off lost, he's gonna be coming out to this point. Okay, so basically, it's it's the left winger is a little bit more of a of a in this if the face off the other side, then obviously everything reverses. But in this case, the left winger's got to be a little bit more of a, a skill position, I guess, a, a, a 
smart position, he's going to read it because if he comes out full blown, um, or if, I mean, sorry, if he times it and doesn't come out full blown, then a lot of times he can arrive just slightly before the puck or, um, you know, make it look like this defenseman's open when really he's not. And then he times it, gets there at the same time as the puck, able to make a hit or possibly intercept that pass. Again, this is a position where if you time it right and if you get your angles proper, um, the left winger can snake a lot of breakaways out of this out of this setup. And uh, that's, again, that's another piece of strategy that I love is uh, using defensive zone faceoffs to turn into offensive scenarios. And by being really aggressive on the D zone faceoff, uh, a lot of times you can give yourself offensive opportunities without really adding too much of a threat on the defensive side. So, you know, anytime you're able to gain more offense without giving yourself more vulnerabilities on defense, then I think that's a good thing. So um, D zone faceoffs, if you set them up properly, can often lead to that. So that's what we're looking to do. Um, again, right wingers basically, or right defensemen basically making sure this guy has a lane through. So as soon as that faceoff drops, he's going to step in front of this player. Uh, back in the old days, I'd say latch on, you know, give him a little hook, give him, make sure he's wrapped up with your stick. Uh, you can't get away with quite as much of that anymore, but you can definitely step in his way and, uh, you know, make him have to skate around you. And um, usually if you turn your back to that player, so kind of step in, um, back facing this player you can even be a little bit physical there it's it's like i said refs different refs call it differently but um get you know test it out figure out what you can get away with and then do as much as possible so get in that guy's way make sure he can't get through to to block your right winger on the uh, on the draw some teams don't even set a guy up here some teams they'll pull this guy out and if that happens then let the right winger come out or the right d come out with him and just let your right winger set up right on the right on the hash marks. So if there's not a a guy trying to cut off the right winger's lane to the point, then let the right winger get even closer, and he can just set up right on those hash marks and go straight through. Um, again, let's pull off some of these arrows and just kind of give a couple other scenarios, just possibilities. Uh, if the if the faceoff comes to this guy, right wingers doing the same thing, just coming through. Because usually, you know, one of the faceoff plays I like to run is, um, you know, to have the puck come back to, uh, you know, the, the centerman either ties up or wins it back just lightly right here, and then uh, this player comes through, picks up the puck, and I got the wrong kind of arrow here, picks up the puck, comes across the top of the circle and lets a shot go from the seam. That can be a really nice play. I like that play. Um, so if that's if that's how they're setting up, then the right winger stay, still stay, still has the same responsibility. He comes through, finds where the puck went. Hopefully he can cut him off somewhere around here, and uh, that's where he's going. So he comes out, makes the hit or or the poke check. How you know whether you're playing check or no check hockey, and takes care of the shot. Basically, he wants to be the man blocking the shot no matter what. And the nice thing about this, so I won't go through too many more lost scenarios here because that pretty much sums it up. You've got guys going through to take the shots. Um, you've got, I guess I should address the defenseman as well. The, the defenseman um, wrap up, hold on. This defenseman's not going to chase him out. We don't want that. Um, if we lose the faceoff, this defenseman's retreating back to the front of the net. This defenseman will hang on, um, you know, just kind of tie up. And then um, typically he'll be retreating back to the front of the net as well. Uh, in the lost defense or in the lost face off, the centerman ties up for a split second, makes sure that that guy's not going to walk through him. Uh, and then he's retreating back to the front. The right winger, as we already said, has gone through. Okay. And then the left winger starts kind of in a sag position if it looks like we've lost it and he's cheating up a tiny bit. So, really, at the end of the day, where does that put us? That puts us almost in a textbook. D zone coverage setup anyways if we're using the sagging zone coverage which I recommend I really like that coverage anyways so you know if the pucks on the on this side on the right side of the ice then typically we'll have our right winger covering the right defenseman anyways so that puts him in good position there um, again we'll usually have our left winger sagging and that you know that puts him in good position there left winger sagging but anticipating a possible pass D to D pass 
puts him in good position there. Usually we have uh, a defenseman on the back door, a defenseman on the front door. So in this case, these guys will need to flip-flop when it makes sense to do that. So get back to their proper sides. Um, you know, but other than that, everything's pretty much where it needs to be. Centerman's in support position for no matter where the puck is. And if they've won it back, then this is perfect position for that. Um, and and yeah, so so this setup in the D zone in the in the D zone faceoff puts us in proper position for uh, D zone coverage. If we lose the draw, which is what we're trying to do anyways, uh, also gives us a little bit of an offensive threat if we lose the draw for the the possibility of one of the wingers picking off a pass, which is nice. And um, you know it gives us good good positioning. So from here, you know if the puck goes back to the corner, then one of our D comes out. Um, you know, if, if they go back to the boards and this guy tries to walk through, then you typically in this setup, we have our centerman play that, which he's in good position to do that. Um, I, I usually say centerman takes the seam. So we're in, uh, we're in proper fundamental position for a D zone coverage if we lose the draw. Let's go ahead now and take a look at some of our offensive options. Again, from the same setup. Oops, I'm putting the guys in the wrong spots here. Left D here. Right D here. Right winger just on his inside shoulder. Now this looks a lot bigger than it will be on the ice. You'll have a lot more room. But basically we want these guys shoulder to shoulder. And then our left winger over here. Okay, let's get rid of this box. Now let's say we win the draw. So this is the optimal, you know, best case scenario. Here's what we're looking to do. Is we're looking to win the draw back to the corner. Okay. And uh, hopefully with enough speed that it kind of bounces out a little bit. That's what it gives, uh, you know, gives this guy the easiest shot at it. So uh, let's start with our right winger this time. Soon as the puck drops, win or lose, what is the right winger doing? You should already have that answer. He's going through. Okay, he's the attack man. He's going to go through, win or lose. Okay. Now you'll notice that uh, if he goes through and we're on a breakout. Now, what is that? where does that put him in position? That puts him in proper position if you're using the top-down breakout. And you can go back to our coach's training course and see you know, if, if any of this terminology doesn't make sense. Um, different teams run this differently. Some teams run the bottom-up breakout, that's how I call it, where the wingers are swinging low and then picking the puck up, moving forward out of the zone, coming this way. Um, that can work until another team picks up on it and starts pinching on you. Uh, then it sometimes can make more sense to run a top-down breakout. In this case, it makes a lot of sense if you're running a top-down breakout because the right winger is already in position for a top-down. Top-down is basically the opposite of bottom-up, right? Um, the winger starts high, and then as the face-off looks like he's coming, to, as sorry, as the uh, breakout looks like it's coming out his side, he turns down, um, distances himself just slightly from that defenseman, picks up the puck and then uh, gives a little touch pass to the to the center man coming through. Or if the defenseman stays with him, he can use that as an opportunity to chip it past him off the boards. And then usually you've got your center man and your weak side winger coming through as support. So this puts, A, this puts us in good position for a top down breakout. Um, B, it, it also, you know, that's if it's a strong side, which I don't usually recommend anyways. Um, but B, it puts him in a good position to become a breakaway man afterwards. And I'll show you how that works. So. Um, if we, as soon as the puck drops, right winger is coming through. Um, if we win it, then that's great. Left defenseman is going to come through, pick it up, and um, he's got to be quick on this because typically you're going to have one of these wingers chasing him. Either the centerman busting through, which that's our centerman's job, make sure he doesn't get through. So win that draw, then tie up really quick. Give that a split second of uh, a split second more time for this defenseman to get the play, get the puck, and make the play but usually this winger will be chasing that defenseman, so it's gotta be fast. Defenseman picks it up without even thinking you're gonna do a hard ring um, down around the boards. So I'm gonna try to make this look as pretty as possible, but uh, with, uh, with drill draw, usually we go like this, and we do it in a couple steps. Okay, so we're gonna do a hard ring. Now, this is can usually be a good thing to practice um, because a lot of players don't understand their angles yet, and it takes some, uh, Take some experience to learn how the puck's gonna uh, how the puck's gonna behave off a of bounce off the board. So if you if you get it, um, I'm just gonna end that there. <coughs> if you get the wrong angle, the puck's not gonna ring properly. Um, if you get it a little too too far um, 
too far in front of the corner, it's going to bounce and then come out in, the, in a bad angle. If you get it too far into the corner, it's going to die in there. So really you want to get the proper angle right in the corner where it's going to kind of you know swing around the corner and then come straight up the boards. Okay, that's what we're looking to do, this hard ring breakout. This is going to be, you know, win the face off, quickly get it out of our zone and have an offensive threat going the other way. Um, we talked about the left winger. The left winger's positioning depends on whether we win or lose the face off. So um, if we win the face off, remember he's holding back just a bit, just for a split second to see where the puck goes before he reacts. Um, if we win the face off, he's going straight to the boards because he knows the break, the ring breakout's coming and he needs to beat his defenseman to that puck, okay? So as soon as that puck drops, as soon as he sees it's a, it's a win, it's a one face-off, he's going to the boards with the idea that he's going to be beating that defenseman to the puck, and he wants to hopefully have, you know, if this defenseman's got a good, I recommend just a hard slap shot. Get that hard slap shot, get it around there as quick as possible. We want to get this guy picking up the puck as high as possible, Okay, you know that this defenseman, um, if he's worth anything, is going to be reading it. You might get away with this, like, without any opposition for the, maybe the first time. But then as soon as they see that that has happened, they're going to be, you know, trying to beat you there. So this defenseman's coming. Usually what is going to be a great play here is a, just a quick chip off the boards. Um, and this is going to all come together, I promise. What I love to see happen is immediately after. So the defense, the centerman wins the draw holds this guy up for a split second, then releases, and then he's gonna be following the puck and becoming a support man. And where this works really, really nicely is for when the centerman, because this the winger's going in blind. He's He's got his back to this defenseman. He won't know exactly where that defenseman is. And um, sometimes he'll feel pressure that's not actually there and uh, you know chip it away or give it away when he doesn't need to. So the best way to do this is for the centerman to communicate where that defenseman is. So, and it doesn't have to be like exactly where he is, but basically let him know if he's got time or not. So if he's got time, you're yelling, you've got time, time, time. If not, then you're yelling chip, right? Um, because if that guy's right on him, then the next play is the chip off the boards. And uh, let's get the kind of a quick arrow just to show that. So uh, if this guy is right on him, then it's not a hard play to just boom, chip off the boards, get that puck out in the neutral zone. And that, as soon as we get it past this defenseman, that's all that we need to worry about. Because from there, if the other players have done it properly, now we're home free. Because think about what we've got going. We've got our centerman busting through. We've got our winger who has busted through. And as soon as he sees that our, he's, he's getting through, then he sees that we've won the faceoff. And as soon as he sees we've won it, now he's turning up ice and getting himself in position in fact I probably drew that arrow wrong let's let's fix that up I'm gonna change the the way it looks just a little bit here because we don't want him coming back into the zone that's what that arrow made it look like so he's gonna be coming out watching kind of floating a little bit just to so he sees where this play happens like whether it's actually gotten out of the zone or not then as soon as he sees that it's come through, boom, he's coming through. Now, depending on where the angle of the puck comes, he may go, if the angle comes this way, where it's more into the middle, he may just veer over, pick it up himself, and go. Um, if it comes out this way, or it's not that hard, or maybe it you know, kind of dies out here, well, then we've got our centerman in perfect position. He'll do the same thing. He'll go through. Um, he's already communicated it. Most likely, this is where it'll happen, okay? And then from there, we've either got a 2 on 0 or usually this defenseman will have read it and uh, we'll know that his team's in a little bit of trouble here and he'll be coming back. So most of the time, you'll end up with a 2 on 1. Um, but it works. It works so, so, so well. And it's a, it's a fantastic play. Um, and that, so, so again, so that puts you in perfect position for w whether you win if you win it, it puts it in a great position for a breakout. If you lose it, it puts you in a great position for a defensive zone coverage or a possible offensive threat if one of your wingers can pick it off. Um, one thing I should mention, this is backtracking a tiny bit, but I think it's this this play has worked really, really well for me, is um, I'll tell, if I'm the right winger here, I'll tell my left winger, hey, if I pick up the puck, don't even think about it, just bust out to the neutral zone wide, okay? And then as if I come through and I pick that puck up, no matter where I pick it up from, so let's just say somehow I, I pick it up right in here. It's bobbling or whatever, I pick the puck up in here. Okay, so as I'm coming through, I pick it up in here. 
all I'll do is just turn and fire to the middle, right? Fire, sorry, fire cross ice, right? So I just turn and throw it. Um, <clears throat> if that defenseman's right exactly there, and then obviously I, I won't shoot it straight at the defenseman, but I'll get it out into the neutral zone. And uh, you know, if my winger has done it properly, then usually, because the puck goes faster than the skater, right? If the winger's done it properly, usually the puck's bouncing somewhere, somewhere out in here, somewhere in this general area, uh, just as that winger is is arriving. So he'll come out, boom, puck's bounced off the board, now it's right here, and uh, he's gone for a breakaway. That that one, I promise you, if you get good at that, that will work. So get your wingers trained on that where it's, you know, hey, anywhere, if you pick it up anywhere in here, all you're doing is throwing it wide. Um, and you'll have your winger going with you. And if you do that, and then obviously don't just throw it wide and watch, throw it wide and then bust down the ice with him. And uh, you'll have two on O's happening all day long. Uh, you know, if you get good at doing that. So face off strategically, uh, that's this is the setup I love. And there's so many different options and possibilities from this that really the options are limitless. And um, you know, as long as you do it properly, it will set you up in the proper position for whatever your objective is, whether you've won the face off or lost it. Puts you in good position for a breakout if you win it. Uh, puts you in good position for your defenses on coverage if you lose it and um, gives you a, a number of different ways to make it an offensive threat either way, whether you have won or lost it. Uh, another thing that I like to experiment with, and um, this will be more or less effective against different teams. Uh, in fact, let me clear off. I hate taking time to do this, but you know it gets pretty confusing by the end if you've got so many different arrows and lines and everything else. But the, the thing I was gonna say is one thing I like to experiment with is winning defense zone faceoffs forward. And uh, you know, it's a little more risky, absolutely. Um, but if done if done properly, if done well, you can you can do it without exposing yourself to too much more risk. So um, you can look at it and, and the centerman can tell, usually a centerman can tell which direction the opposing centerman's trying to win the puck. If he's trying to win it to uh, to the middle. And if this centerman is a right-handed centerman, which you know could could work easily. So if this the centerman is trying to win it back to the middle, and this guy's a right-handed, then uh, all you're doing is slapping the other guy's stick in the same direction he's already trying to pull the puck, and um, basically shooting through like this. So basically, you're going to make it so that it's this guy wins the faceoff in the direction he's trying to win it, but he wins it so hard that his defenseman can't pick it up. Then you've got your right winger barreling through. And depending on where the puck ends up, he may pick it up along the way, or the left winger can just uh, you know swing through and uh, pick it up. But if you have that that mindset and you make sure your wingers know about it beforehand, that they're going to be you know barreling through no matter what, and you can win that faceoff forward, then uh, you know a lot of times again you can catch the other team off guard and uh, set yourself up on an odd man rush just straight off that faceoff play. Uh, it can work at, at the higher levels. It may not be uh, quite as easy um, at lower levels or you know like adult leagues, <clears throat> adult league stuff like that. Uh, it works really well, and um, other teams don't pick up on it very. Even if they see what you're doing, a lot of times uh, you know they can't do anything about it if you're good enough. So um, that's something I like to keep in my in my tool belt as well is uh, the option of winging the puck forward on the D zone faceoff because. Teams don't expect it that often, and uh, it can, again, make a defensive play, turn it into an offensive threat, and works really well. So hopefully that helps out, but, you know, the same kind of mindset, same kind of strategy um, applies in the neutral zone as well as the offensive zone faceoffs. I usually just like to start with the uh, D zone because that's where, you know, D zone faceoffs will make or break you. If you lose a, a neutral zone faceoff, it's not as big a deal. If you lose an offensive zone faceoff, not as big a deal. But really having your setup and your plays nailed down and your different options nailed down in the D zone, uh, that's really going to help you. Um, you know, really going to help you with your game and make sure you're not going to get any goals scored against you on that D zone faceoff. So uh, hopefully that helps. But uh, Stephen, great question, uh, great request. Best of luck to you this coming season, and hopefully you can implement some of these strategies in uh, the upcoming season.